Good morning, everyone. As we continue to worship the name of the Lord, let His Word encourage all of us today. Marami po tayong narinig na mga di kaaya-ayang balita, hindi lamang sa ating bansa, kundi pati na sa buong mundo. You know, to hear these uh, news makes my heart um, really heavy. But God is reminding us that He has the complete control of every event in the world. He still runs the whole universe and He is still seated on His throne. Kaya purihin natin ang Diyos sa Kanyang kaluhatian. Nasa kabila ng lahat ng ito, ang Kanyang kabutihan at biyaya ay patuloy na siyang tumataguyod at nagpapalakas sa ating lahat. <clears throat> Tayo ay dadako na sa ating pag-aaral sa Salita ng Diyos sa pangalawang liham ni Pedro, 2 Peter. Previously, uh, Peter had written uh, to the early Christians for the purpose of comforting them and encouraging them dahil sa kanilang kalagayan. They were suffering and they were facing so much persecution during that time. At sa panahong ito, sila ay nasa bingit ng paglilipol o kamatayan because Emperor Nero was in the height of his hatred and pride and political ambition at ninais niya na patayin ang lahat ng mga Kristiyano sa Jerusalem at Karatig Bayan. And of course, Jesus already mentioned this to his disciples even prior to that, even years prior to that. In Mark 13 verses 1 to 2, it says, And Jesus was leaving the temple. One of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Jesus replied, Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Now, this was a vision of the city's great destruction. Although political in the human eyes, but in reality, this is spiritual in nature. Because this is the first major blow from the darkness that tried to go against the Church of Jesus Christ. So, 37 years after, or AD 70, we can see in the picture here, that Nero destroyed and burned Jerusalem to the ground. And most believers, if not killed, they were scattered to different places. So before all this happened, Peter wrote his first letter to prepare them upang sila ay ihanda sa napakapait at mahirap na kanilang dadanasin. But three years after writing that first letter, Peter wrote again the Christians sa, kanilang, sa kanyang pangalawang liham. Kung ano ang kanyang unang sinulat, kung ang unang sinulat niya noon ay nakasentro sa kanilang pagsubok, which is physical in nature, Itong kanyang pangalawang liham ay nakasentro sa internal attack, sa kani, which is their complacency o pagiging kampante sa kabila ng maling doktrina na tinuturo ng mga false teacher na dumadami, dumadami din naman sa panahong yaon. Which is why Peter was more concerned because more than physical attack, the attack against the faith or the spiritual attack is more dangerous and more destructive. So in chapter 2, Peter warned them that these kinds of false teachers and even false prophets are among them. In verse 1, he said they will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them. However, despite these warnings, Peter said in, in the following verses that many will still follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Now, our problem is that when we are complacent or hindi tayo maingat, we will fall victim to these false teachings and we will become ineffective and unproductive Christians. Now, one of the most challenging issues that Peter and even the other apostles like Paul or Timothy 
was that there was a growing number of teachers who proliferate that Jesus is not at all coming back. Hindi daw darating muli ang Panginoong Jesus. Yun ang maling katuroan na uh, tinuturo ng mga false teachers. Ang sabi nila, gawa-gawa na lamang daw ang resurrection. Now, Paul refuted this in his letter to the Corinthians. They said, you know, people come and go, generations come and go, and where is Jesus? Ang tagal ng panahon niyang sinabi yun. Pero hindi pa rin siya dumating. Hindi pa rin siya nakabalik. <clears throat> in first, Second Peter 3 verse 4, they will say, Where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. People come and go, wala pa rin. Kingdoms and civilizations come and go, wala pa rin. Di pa rin bumabalik ang Panginoong Jesus. In, ba in fact, people of today's generations are still asking the same question, right? Many scoffers or yung manunuya do not believe that there is a reckoning or judgment in the final days. And this is very convenient and tempting, especially in the times of calamity, in the times of pandemic like our, like our situation, or in economic collapse, or life and death situations. Why? Because there is no more accountability. Accountability will be overshadowed by panic or fear. Kaya nga, ang daming news ng looting or pagnanakaw, social disorder sa ibang bansa nung unang pumutok ang COVID-19. People were not anymore accountable for their choices. But for Peter, this is being short-sighted. In fact, although he was a fisherman by training before his calling as an apostle, his explanation was quite scientific in this verse that he's giving us today. And in fact, I have a hunch or I have a feeling that even Albert Einstein got his inspiration about his theory of relativity from this verse. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8-9, to he said, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Because He is light, Siya yung ilaw, Siya yung liwanag, in fact, the source of all lights. So all other elements, even time, will go slow when referenced to Himself who is the creator of time. So therefore, the real question here is not about when, but the real question is why? Bakit parang ang tagal bumalik ni Jesus? It's because binibigyan tayo ng panahon upang mahikayat natin ang wala pa kay Kristo. Hindi siya nagmamadali o hindi siya nagbabagal, kundi iniisip niya ang bawat isa. This is the explanation of Peter. For those scoffers who are questioning, bakit hindi pa dumating ang Panginoong Jesus? Isipin na lang po natin kung isa man lang sa miyembro ng ating mga pamilya ang hindi makasama sa langit sa pagbabalik ni Kristo. Therefore, habang hindi pa siya bumalik or ang ating Panginoon ay hindi pa bumalik, it's not a time to be unproductive or ineffective, especially spirituality. This is a time to double time and to win many to Christ. Now, as we are in this pandemic and other major world news, world problems, you know, we heard many questions. Babalik na kaya si Jesus? And psychologically, we become helpless, we become ineffective, we become paralyzed, no? especially if we worry too much. We think that there's not much that we can do. And yes, perhaps, on the one side, Tinanggalan tayo ng mga bagay na nagpapaubos lang sa ating mga oras, pero hindi naman mga essentials. Minsan mga walang kwenta, pinaglalaanan natin ng panahon nung wala pa itong pandemic na ito. Pero ngayon, pinamukha na sa atin ng Panginoon kung ano nga ba ang matatawag nating essentials sa ating buhay. Ang ating oras with God, 
ang ating oras with our family, the people who matter to God and who matter to us, those are the essentials. Ngunit hindi lamang ang pagiging unproductive ang naging issue ni Pedro sa kanyang sulat dito. People have become destructive by mis- misinterpreting some doctrinal teaching of Paul and use it for their own benefit and advantage. You know, ito po yung kadalasang marka or the mark of false teachers and false prophet. He said, he or Paul writes the same way in his in all his letters, speaking in them on these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, mahirap intindihin, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. People distorted and abused their freedom in Christ as freedom to do whatever they want. Which Paul explained and clarified this in this letter at ang sabi niya, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. But you know, people of today's generation has that same have that same tendency. And marami sa ating mga Kristiyano, kampante, gumagawa ng kasalanan, anyway, save naman ako. You know, that's an abuse. This is the road to ineffective, unproductive, and destructive life. A spiraling down which starts in the wrong interpretation or understanding of the Word of God. Now, Peter described these kinds of people, people as are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Para daw itong mga tao na bukal na walang tubig, useless. Clouds without water that can be driven by winds or storm that cannot produce rains needed by the plants. Walang saisay. But this should be his worst description to those who first believe in Jesus but turned to heresies even denying the Sovereign Lord. He said in verse 22, Of them the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a soul that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. And this is not us. This is not our identity. Peter reminded us that those who are about to suffer that great persecution, they are called to pursue a spiral up life. Now, this is clearly our calling as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our identity. Dapat paangat tayo ng paangat sa ating buhay. And so, Peter stressed here the importance of revisiting our salvation and let it be confirmed. Tingnan natin kung ano nga ba ang kalagayan ng ating pananampalataya versus our actions. Because in reality, it is easy to claim and profess in words, but anything said will soon be validated, should be validated through our actions. In chapter 1, verse 10, he said, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Are your actions confirming the authenticity of the salvation that you receive from the Lord? And this should be a sharp question to rouse not only them, the Christians before, in the first century believers, but to us also today. That if we really belong to the Lord, our works should prove it. Now, doctrinally speaking, we did nothing to purchase our salvation. No human works can ever save us. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. But then again, their misinterpretation is that are they gonna wait until the rapture without doing anything since salvation is not by works? Of course, no. 
Because to really accept and value this free gift of salvation, it should produce an excitement in the heart. It should produce gratitude that empowers a faith that should produce action. A correct understanding of the doctrine of salvation is this in Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are saved to be productive. We are saved to spiral up, not spiral down. That yes, we are not excused from any troubles and persecution in this life, but that is not a reason to be unproductive. In fact, in times like this, that a genuine believer is most effective. He said in chapter 1 verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Peter is reminding us that at the moment of our salvation, we have actually stepped into the realm of eternity and abundant life and glorious life in Jesus Christ. And Paul gave us this imagery about salvation. In Romans 6 verse 13, he said, Those who have been brought from death to life. Binuhay tayo mula sa kamatayang espiritual upang maging buhay kay Kristo. At simula nung nabuhay tayo, ito, ito na ang bumalagta sa atin. In Romans 8.32, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? All things, mga kapatid. Lahat ng ating mga pangangailangan, sinusupply ng Panginoon. Meron, bang, meron ba siyang hindi binigay? Kung binigay na niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak na si Yesu Kristo, meron pa ba siyang i-withhold sa atin? In another letter, Paul described what he have, what we have as believers into this. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. You have inheritance. You have the Holy Spirit. Ano pa ba ang kulang sa inyo? Ang kulang sa atin? We have everything we need for life and godliness. In other words, wala pong pwedeng mag-akusa sa Panginoon na, Panginoon, kulang pa po ako, kaya hindi ako naging godly. Kaya hindi ako naging mabunga. Kulang pa ang binigay mo. No. In fact, this verse is mind-blowing. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You know, the word Participate, in the Greek word, it means koinonio, which means sharer. In other words, binahaginan tayo ng Panginoon sa kanyang katangian. He just didn't give us all things. He shared His very nature. And for those who belittle who they are, yung minamaliit nila ang kanilang mga sarili. Minsan sinasabi nila, ganito lang kasi ako eh, kawawa, kawawa ako eh, wala akong kwentang tao. That's not true. Because God has shared to you His very nature, the divine nature of God. You are not just flesh and blood. You have something that even the devil will run the moment you use them and are aware of them. You participate in the divine nature of God. Remember James chapter 4, verse 7? He said, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The more you are aligned, the more you align your will to God and yourself to Him, 
the devil cannot last looking at you. When you resist him, meaning when you go against him, he will have to flee. Ganon tayo ka-powerful. Ganon ang nature natin. Ganon natin nakuha yun sa Panginoon. Now, equipped with all this, how do we spiral up? How do we go from glory to glory? How do we become productive and effective? Now, Peter definitely wanted to equip them and us that in the coming sufferings of those people in the New Testament and their persecution is, is actually an opportunity to stay afloat or rise up above the storm. Now, let's look at how he would like us to soar high here. In chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, he said, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. You know, a Christian's life is a glory-to-glory -glory journey with Christ. And we are expected to level up and high amidst any circumstances in our lives. Starting from a simple faith, one can actually show goodness. Marami po akong nakilala ng mga simpleng taong mananampalataya. Nasa kabila ng kanilang paghihirap, whether in poverty or in trial sa kanilang buhay, ay nagpapakita pa rin ng kanilang kabutihan. At hindi papayag ang Diyos na ito ay hindi magbubunga at ito ay hindi masusuklian. Their goodness will be added or will produce knowledge. That This is what the verse is saying here. That those who show goodness in the midst of difficulties, pinapakitaan sila ng Diyos ng malalim na pagkaintindi, knowledge, sa kanilang buhay at pananampalataya. Kaya pala testimony ito ng maraming mga Kristiyano. They would say to me, Pastor, di ko po maintindihan eh. Sinunod ko lang ang Panginoon, pero payapa ang aking puso. Kahit wala akong konkretong nakikita sa ngayon, pero parang nakikita ko na kumikilos ang Panginoon, kaya payapa ako. That is the understanding. That is the knowledge of God there. This knowledge or understanding is not from the world. It is from God. And then to knowledge, you have self-control. Only can we have self-control when we understand God's working in our life, right? Dahil nasa Kanya ang lahat, I can relax. I can naturally, I can say, Ikaw na ang bahala sa aking buhay, Panginoon. That's self-control. I can, And after self-control, I can persevere. And in perseverance, I can show godliness. Because that will somehow be produced in someone who persevere. And godliness will attract you to many people to love them, to bring them to the Lord. And eventually, there is love. Ang buhay pananampalataya ay hindi kailangang stagnant, mga kapatid. It should bear love in the end. And God provided all that we need so that we can soar high, we can spiral up glorious life in the Lord. In chapter 1 verse 8, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians have become ineffective and unproductive because they did not trust God in this kind of processes. Instead of seizing the opportunity, what trials can do to their faith, they fear trials and stuck where they are. We need to trust God in this process that He is giving us. We are called to produce the good out from the ugly and painful. Our Christian life should be a standout, never to be stagnant, never to be boring walk with the Lord. Meron tayong kasabihan na bloom where you are planted. And I believe ito ay akma para sa ating lahat 
na mga mananampalataya kay Kristo. Kahit saan man tayo ilagay, whether sa magandang buhay o maraming pagsubok, maraming bagyo, maraming unos, we can all bloom, we can spiral up because everything has been given to us by the Lord. Tayo na yata ang pinaka-resilient na mga nilalang sa mundong ito, ang mga Kristiyano. Dahil kahit saan mo ilagay, nabubuhay. Kahit saan tayo nilagay, nag-i-improve tayo, lumalago tayo, hindi tayo nag-deteriorate. We are ever increasing because we have been given everything we need for life and godliness. So this is our promise that we can bask into the rich welcome of God's eternal kingdom. You know, alam natin, many are the harsh reality of this world. Even Peter, siya mismo na sumulat ng sulat na ito para mag-encourage sa mga mananampalataya sa Jerusalem. He did not die in the bed of roses, so to speak. Tradition says that Nero had him crucified head down. But what courage and proof did Peter have to say that you will receive a welcome into the eternal kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Nothing except to say that he already experienced a foretaste of that reward here on earth. May patikim na ang Panginoong Jesus para kay Pedro sa kalwalhatian na hinaharap niya. Let us remember that the word eternal does not mean future only. Eternal means existing forever. Ibig sabihin, no beginning and no ending. Remember in the timeline of God? Time is in His hand. Siya ang gumawa ng oras ng panahon. And our limited understanding of time makes it impossible to describe kailan nga ba nagsimula ang mga bagay para sa Diyos. There is a mystery behind the concept of time. But what is sure about time is that the moment we believe in Jesus, we have stepped into the time of eternity where time is actually undefined. Remember this verse in John 3 verse 18? But whoever does not believe believe stands condemned already. Teka lang, condemn na? Nihiwala pang ang judgment in the last days eh. And here's another one in Ephesians 2 verse 6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. Ganun din. Nandito pa ako sa mundo. Pero parang past tense na. Nakaupo na ako doon together with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realms. You know, in the timeline of God, our reference point is always when we believe. The moment we believed, we have stepped into the eternity with God. So anong ibig sabihin nito para sa atin ngayon? That it doesn't matter whether matagal pa ang pagbalik ni Jesus Cristo dahil kahit ngayon o today, we can already bask and enjoy the benefit of that inheritance. Time cannot hinder us from enjoying today what God has prepared for us even in the future for those who believe. Si Pedro, though he was facing death in the hands of Nero, he had a foretaste of joy which is unspeakable. The reason why he was able to encourage the Christians before and even us today. And I am not saying that he did not feel the pain, nor did he not feel sadness or he did not worry. But here is what Paul described in his words of encouragement to the Corinthian church with regards to their present sufferings. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, he said, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Any trouble that we have today will never outweigh the glory we will have in that eternal kingdom. When Jesus was facing death, he was overwhelmed with the burden of the sin of the world. And in that moment, he asked his father to borrow or give him that glory today to sustain him. He said in John 17, 5, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. But Jesus is with you now. 
the Holy Spirit is with you today. And the love of the Father is also with you because of Jesus Christ. What earthly burdens and trials cannot be melted when God is with us? Who shares His divine nature with us has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.